You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R.com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Solana, Doge, and more. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity, provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments throughout the world's leading crypto derivatives markets. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on The Crypto Rundown. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of crypto derivatives. It's time for The Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Monday. It is time for the Crypto Rundown. Did you miss us? We were off last week for the President's Day holiday here in the U.S., but now we're back and raring to go. A lot going on in the world of crypto to catch up on. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the THE, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you have been binging all last week and throughout the weekend. Remember, if you like what you hear, this show, anything else on the network, nearly a dozen shows coming at you, carving up the option space in all sorts of fun ways, then leave a comment, or a like, a star. This, to me, is the new addition to the network, even though it's been running for five or six years now. So it's not that new, but to me, it's the new kid. <laughs> so keep the party rolling. Keep those likes, those comments. It's available on just about every platform under the sun. So wherever you get it, do throw a like a star a comment. Does help new people continue to discover the content. And given what's going on in these markets, there are new people searching for the world of crypto derivatives all the time. So help them beat a path to our door. And of course, if you want to beat a path to even more fun, engaging in quite a bit of crypto derivatives content, then head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. A lot of our guests in the pro Q&A hot seat these days seem to be tackling Crypto vol, crypto derivatives from a variety of interesting ways. So if you like that, of course, the pro Q&As are going to be very engaging for you. Of course, options oddities, the end of every week where we break down all the unusual activity. Lots of great fun stuff, including you like crypto content. We did that great panel, myself and Mr. Greg Magadini from Amber Dane, as well as Henry from SIBO and JJ from IG Group. And a great talk, including a lot of it on crypto derivatives. You can only find that on the... Pro, so theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to check that one out, unless you happen to join us at the conference back in January. That is the only place you could check it out. So a lot of fun. And speaking of checking things out, let's check out who's joining us today in the crypto hot seat. Forget about cold storage. It's time to turn up the heat on thought leaders from the world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time to take their place on the, the crypto, crypto hot seat. Hot seat. 
right, everybody, welcome to the Crypto Hot Seat, the portion of the show where we roll out the hot seat for guests from throughout the world of crypto derivatives and indeed beyond and proceed to pick their brain just for the benefit of you, the listener. And today's guest is now a two-timer on the old hot seat. He last joined us back on November 20th of last year, so it's been a little bit since we've checked in with them. They have some cool things, it sounds like, in the offing, so it should be a good time to check up with them. He is Michael Dunn, the president of Bitnomial. Michael, welcome back to the Crypto Hot Seat. Hey, thanks, Mark. It's good to be back. And Michael, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we haven't chatted with you in a few months, but it sounds like things are happening in your neck of the woods. So catch us up. What's the latest? What is the big news going on in the world of Bitnomial right now? I think the biggest news is in December, we had a, uh, an approval for our DCO license, which allows us to start our own clearing operations here um, to fully vertically integrate the, our exchange clearinghouse and um, our clearing firm operations, which is really exciting for the crypto space. I think it allows us to you know, make sure we can get crypto all the way through the system, all the way from trading and, and going and using leverage and going through all the way so people can actually use their Bitcoin to finance their trading operations. Now let's get into that then. As you mentioned, you did add a clearinghouse to your offerings. As you mentioned, you're now a brokerage and an exchange and a clearinghouse all in one nice, neat little package there. Uh, but you're right. For a certain segment of the audience, particularly for a lot of people listening to this network, a lot of them coming from the world of options and derivatives, the traditional options and derivatives markets, they're used to a little bit of clearing. They're used to not having that counterparty risk hanging over their heads out there. Maybe tell the rest of our audience why this is such a big deal, adding a clearinghouse. This is a big deal because we're trying to bridge the gap between what crypto native firms what are used to offshore um, to bring it to the U.S. market in a safe and compliant way that mitigates counterparty risk. I think one of the main benefits of using an offshore exchange is that you can use Bitcoin as collateral to fund your trading. I think that is exactly what we're going to try to do here in the United States, and it has not been done yet. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, but we have all the regulatory clearance to do it. So I think that's the most exciting part here. I'm glad you mentioned bridging that gap. If anything, this show exists right in that gap, right in that sweet spot between uh, the world of the traditional options and futures and all those fun derivatives you normally talk about and this nascent, this burgeoning world of crypto derivatives. And there's a lot of fun interplay going on between them. There's one Venn diagram here, one Venn diagram there. The intersection hasn't exploded yet, but it is on the cusp of that, which is, again, fascinating for us. And it does seem, Michael, like over the last, I would say, about you know year and three, year and four months, however long it's been, since FTX, you know, there's always been a divide in the crypto world between people who like these things we're talking about, clearing and everything else like that. They've become accustomed to them. Or on the other side, there's those crypto native folks who look at all this as anathema and they say, OK, you know what? Uh, DeFi will be the answer to all of this. We've had a lot of guests on both sides of that divide over the last, certainly post FTX. It does seem like FTX really drew that line in the sand very clearly for a lot of people in this space. You're either on one side or you're on the other. You're on the centrally cleared and regulated side, and that will solve the evils of a platform like FTX versus other people who say, you know what, they're the crypto natives. They think the man in the middle gumming up the works at FTX was part of the problem, so they want to remove that centralization. They want to remove all that, and they say DeFi is the route forward. So uh, Michael, for, for those folks, as you mentioned them, the crypto natives, how do you go about luring them to a platform like this that has all of the features you were just talking about? Well, I think it comes down to liquidity and what they're trying to accomplish. I think that in the centralized world, there's always going to be a degree of safety and the price discovery is, is, is done in a centralized way. So I think it's a bit more straightforward and easy to navigate, particularly when settlement's done in a centralized way where you have mitigated counterparty risk. Um, and if you're regulated any of the United States and you can only trade on U.S. platforms, um, quite frankly, there really isn't a lot of, of other options. On the other side, if you are into decentralized exchanges, I think there is a use case for that. I can't really speculate about what it is. I think I'm going to let the, the kind of the free markets expose what that is. But certainly that there's going to be interplay between those two. And we'll kind of find out. We'll find out which uh, platforms are best for which use cases. But I would I would suggest that you're going to see majority of volumes on the centralized exchanges with uh, definitely some exhaust and decentralized exchanges, and we'll see how those play with each other. 
You're right. It certainly exists to this degree in the crypto markets and nowhere else. Nowhere else do we see this chasm between the two sides. So it is it is fascinating to watch it play out. You're coming in this week on the centralized side. I'm sure probably next week we'll have another guest on the DeFi side and the debate will rage anew, Michael. That's the whole purpose of this show <laughs> at the end of the day. But one of the things that caught my eye, I was just checking out a bit gnomeo right before showtime, is uh, something that's obviously near and dear to the heart's of our listeners, it is the Options Insider Radio Network, after all. Uh, you do list Bitcoin options on your website. Uh, no real volume yet, but catch our listeners up. What is the latest on the options and what can they expect from these Bitcoin options from Bitnomial? Yeah, I think what's exciting about our options offering is that it's really going to be the beginning of getting the institutional hedgers in the United States using them to, to manage their, their crypto exposure. What I'm personally excited about is helping out the institutional hedgers and miners. I think that sector has been kind of underlooked and and I think it's, you know, a lot of the the retail side and the speculating side has been given sort of the uh, you know, the, the the special treatment where I think the miners are the ones that need a lot of help. And I think there's a lot of interesting strategies that miners and institutional hedgers can use options for. And I think this should be no surprise to your listeners. Um, you know, earning premiums by, you know, writing calls or, you know, writing puts to expose themselves on the upside is, is very popular and that's going to be lucrative for them. And I think them starting to get involved on our platform to do that is going to be is going to make a big difference. To their treasury balance sheet management. You know, you're right. The the mining segment kind of got overlooked for the last couple of years out there as, of course, we have the latest crypto winter FTX Bitcoin crypto prices fell back to earth. A lot of the rewards the incentives for mining kind of went the way of the dodo now of course here we are approaching the having we're seeing all this post sec approval for bitcoin just shooting things into high gear as well so it does seem like the mining audience may be a little bit back on the forefront again is this another audience that is kind of coming back to the fold maybe these options are the gateway to luring them back to the dark side michael <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the miners and mining pools have been kind of reeling since the SCX collapse, obviously, with the, the huge sell off in Bitcoin. I think it, it you know put a lot of them in trouble. And, you know, we've seen some bankruptcies and some, you know, debt restructuring and things like that. But they're starting to come out of the out of the winter. They're looking for ways to manage their balance sheet. They're looking for ways to earn a premium. They're really looking for ways to be able to, to kind of forecast their profitability and manage their operating and capital expenses. So I think that, you know, they're going to want to go ahead and, and they're going to want to write calls on their long exposure. And hopefully, you know, Mark, on the other side, some of our listeners here and uh, can get on the other side of that, speculate, buy some calls and we have a market. Yeah, I'm thinking right now, I'm hard pressed off the top of my head to think of any of the people I knew who were very active in mining, let's say a few years ago, who are still in it. Most of them, as you mentioned, for all the reasons you just listed, have been shaken out. So it'll be interesting to see if we can see a little bit of a resurgence in the mining space with this latest resurgence in crypto prices. Now, the last time you joined us, Michael, we had an interesting chat about physical versus cash settlement in the crypto derivative space. It did seem for a while there like physically settled was all the rage. We had entries like backed and others coming into the space saying here we go we're going to allow you to write calls against your underlying and have it be called away if that's what you want or sell the puts to get into the position and vice versa and so it was an intriguing prospect it did seem like that kind of for a variety of reasons got usurped by a lot of the cash settled interest but when we talked last you said you know what this is the beginning of a new physically settled wave coming back in the crypto space, you now have your clearing license. Uh, so we have a few more months under our belt. How is that going? Is the physically settled wave, is it ticking back in your favor? Are the folks still all want the cash settled stuff, Michael? Yeah, great question. This all just ties into what I was discussing earlier about the miners coming back in. <laughs> they all have physical Bitcoin exposure they're needing to manage. Um, and cash settled futures aren't going to really allow them to do that easily. Obviously, if you you know if you're long the physical Bitcoin and you short a cash settled contract, um, yes, while you, technically your price uh, exposure is managed, but you still have to do another trade at the end of that to get out of the physical to move it off your balance sheet. I think that's particularly difficult for people to use for to do in the mining space because you know they're not they're not traders like that. But honestly, too, it's uh, there's always uh, what we call slippage, which is the price exposure between the actual expiration of the cash settled contract versus what the price you can actually get for the physical Bitcoin, and those could differ greatly in times of uh, distress, particularly if it's a crowded trade. 
with physical uh, contracts, once you make that trade, say you're long on the physical Bitcoin, you short the physical contract, you take that contract to delivery, you get the price you locked in, and the Bitcoin goes with it at the same time, and the trade's done. You mentioned adding a clearinghouse at the top of our conversation. There's obviously another big player in the derivative space that offers crypto derivatives, and they also have clearing. Of course, talking about CME, they have a pretty large global reach on top of it as well. And then for a variety of reasons, and we could debate what those are, uh, their crypto offerings on Bitcoin and ETH, both the large and the micro, haven't really lit the world on fire. I mean, they did enough volume to launch the Bitto ETF, so that was a feather certainly in their cap. But even a few years on, they haven't really materialized, even with the micro products, which are squarely aimed at the retail audience, even those haven't really captured the imagination of the retail audience out there. Why do you think that is? And why do you think your offerings over there at Bitnomial will escape that curse? I think CME has done a good job, um, obviously appealing to some cash settled uh, participants who just want the price exposure. But I think that there's more of this ecosystem than just that. You know, everyone that we're dealing with has physical Bitcoin exposure and those contracts um, just aren't going to cut it for that. So I really think that we're going to be we're going to be seeing a big growth phase of people wanting to get the physical exposure. Hey, look no further than the spot Bitcoin ETFs coming down the line. What makes them so special? Well, they're they actually have the physical Bitcoin behind it. And I think what's going to be difficult is that you're going to see a supply crunch here with the having, and you're going to have all of the ETFs needing to, to sort of acquire the physical Bitcoin to hold for the, for the ETF holders. So I definitely think that there's been a heightened use case for the actual physical movement of Bitcoin that didn't exist previously. Um, and then add in, you know, more access points uh, in this industry. And I think you're going to see, uh, you're going to see things kind of shift and, and grow here. I mean, that's all we're trying to do is grow the pie. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think we're anywhere close to this, uh, this uh, industry being uh, mature yet. Speaking of growing that pie, we've seen a lot of growth post SEC approval for the ETF. Some people say maybe too much growth. Maybe we have too many funds fighting for a bite of that apple. Do you think we're maybe going to start heading down the other way? Maybe we'll see some consolidation as some of these smaller funds go by the wayside, Michael? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm a very free markets guy, so I'd like to see the amount of competition that we have in the space. Obviously, they're all going to have their different uh, different properties of you know who's a different custodian, you know what kind of fees they're going to charge, and what kind of relationships they have to acquire the physical Bitcoin. I think there probably will be some consolidation. I think, but for the time being, I hope it uh, the competition really works out for the uh, for the buyers and holders of the ETFs too, so we can get a good, really good product. Yeah, I think it's it's still early days for this, but obviously it has been fascinating. Coming as it is on on the cusp of the having as well certainly makes for an interesting one-two punch out there in the Bitcoin space, at least for the coming weeks and months. Speaking of what's coming, we have to keep rolling with the show here, Michael. But before we keep rolling out of the crypto hot seat, I know you guys just got the clearinghouse, but our audience always wants more. We always like to leave them wanting more. So Let's leave them with a little bit of a hint, a little bit of a tease, Michael, of what they can expect coming down the pike from you and the team over there at Bitnomial in the coming months. Well, we're going to be launching some interesting new contracts here um, that I can't go into too much detail with, but they're, they're really there to help the institutional players do their business, hedge their risk, and manage their Bitcoin exposure in a capital efficient way. So I think we're going to keep seeing more of that. We're going to see our options in, in uh, futures volume grow. And, and hopefully be a, a really good spot for liquidity, uh, deep liquidity. And uh, that's all I can really say at the moment. Well, that definitely qualifies as a tease. I guess we have to bring you back in a few months. Is that what you're telling us, Michael? So we can see how all this plays out in the marketplace? I think you might be right about that. <laughs> in the meantime, if folks want to check out all the clearing or these futures we're talking about or anything else over there at Bitnomial, where should they go? What should they do? They can just go to binomial.com, check out our market stats, see what our contracts are, and uh, they can even reach out and, uh, and, and talk to us if they want to. And um, yeah, start trading. Yeah, hopefully next time we chat, we'll have a nice, deep conversation on the options. I'm looking forward to it, Michael. Me too. <laughs> All right. In the meantime, check them out over there at Bitnomial Exchange. It's just bitnomial.com, listeners. If you want to learn more, follow them on Twitter at Bitnomial, all one word. Meanwhile, it's time for us to keep on rolling it is time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown.
All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down all the action in the world's leading digital asset, which is the old BTC. You've probably seen the headlines since our last episode two weeks ago now, listeners. We've been flirting. We've been flirting with that 1T level in Bitcoin. Well, of course, since our last show, Bitcoin did finally reach that impressive market cap milestone once again. We were at a 49,677 on our last show two weeks ago, so just at the cusp of 50K. Not quite over it, but just at the cusp. Coming in to start of the show today, of course, we have broken through it 54,409. In fact, that was pretty much our high since our last show. So we're right at the apex coming into the start of the show. Nowhere to go but down. I'm just joking. Don't get offended, all you holders out there. Uh, the low came pretty much... During our last show, actually, a 49,902. So it's been a tale of two episodes over two weeks. <laughs> a lot going on out there. Let's get out to all the vol and the skew that's lighting it up out there in the Bitcoin market. Of course, you want to see this data for yourselves. Amberdata.io, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. You can see all this data. And we literally just scratched the surface on this stuff. There is many, many hours worth of data we could crunch on this show. Unfortunately, not a full five-hour show at the end of the day, at least not yet, maybe someday. Check it out for yourselves, amberdata.io, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. If you did that, you would see that the weekly, the near-dated vol is looking pretty close to where it was this time two weeks ago, 51 and a half two weeks ago, 52.4, so not even a full point to the upside. Still looking robust, still looking healthy, just... Not quite blowing the doors off. Let's go out a full month, 30 days. That's the more typical frame of reference for people out there measuring things like skew and vol. Even in this zero-day obsessed world, listen, people still like 30-day vol. 30-day vol right now at about a 54 in Bitcoin, 52 last week. So again, only about two points difference. Net show on show, not a huge evolution on the vol front. Let's go out a little bit farther. Let's go out six months, see what those calm, cool, sane heads are offering us out there. And we were at about a 60 even on the show two weeks ago this week, 61.9, so almost two points to the upside. So that's pretty much our tail across the board for Bitcoin vol. Slightly up, but nothing explosive. Let's see if you see anything different in the skew. And it is a little bit different there. Let's go out to the weekly skew first and work our way out. The last show was almost a positive six, about a positive five and three quarters. So people were obviously feeling it. We were close to 50K. They were right on the cusp. They were buying some upside. They were driving up that skew a little bit. This week, yeah, that's all gone. It's pretty much flat, 0.6 to the upside. So I guess maybe for the time being, people thinking we're going to be hanging out here a little bit, at least from an options perspective. Skew is not a crystal ball, listeners. It doesn't tell us exactly where the underlying is going to go. It just tells us how the money is shaping up right now, looking forward. And right now it's telling us on the very near-dated side of the coin, listeners, not a heck of a lot of juice, not a heck of a lot of movement being priced in. In terms of the one-month skew, go a little bit farther out. That was positive five and a half this time two weeks ago. This week, cut in half pretty much, or a little bit shy of two and a half, about 2.35. So still biased to the upside, but not quite as strong as it was. Two weeks ago, let's go out six months. Same deal, 7.1 on the show two weeks ago, 5.6. So coming in a little bit there as well so vol in skew pretty much in across the board as well this week uh oi is that in the answer is kind of <laughs> 153,500 calls open on dare right now that's down about 16,000 from this time two weeks meanwhile the puts 83,500 actually up 5,000 so maybe reflecting a little bit of that skew what we were just talking about earlier out there as well we're coming up to expiration in a few days of course this is a leap year this year so That'll be interesting. Uh, so we'll see. I expect some evolution on this OI a bit next week once we have expiration rolling off the board. But what continues to roll up is Bitto, listeners. 25 and three quarters when we kicked off the show. Up a little over two, about 2.15 points. Uh, the ADV coming in a little bit, 54,000 a day. That's still up from about the 10 or 15,000 it was before all this Bitcoin ETF madness gripped the market. But that's still down about 20,000 from where it was two weeks ago. Of course, today's numbers might change that. 80,000 on the tape when we kicked off the show. So a pretty active day out there for Bitto, which is also interesting given the fact that, you know, everyone was uh, all up in arms about going to the spot ETFs. 
here we go, Bitto. Still doing a fair amount of paper out there. Let's see right now as we're partway through the show. Over 100,000, 101,000 contracts on the tape so far today. So a pretty action-packed day. Leading the dance today, we have 7,600 of the March 30s going up, followed by 7,500 of the June 25s. Now, there's a lot of OI on those strikes already, so it's hard to tell. It doesn't look like they're opening, so they could be taking some off. Again, we have moved a little bit, so taking some upside off isn't the craziest thing, but still... Those are the big boys, followed by 6,800 of the Jan 20s. Now, fairly in the money calls. <laughs> Those look like they might be closing there as well. So maybe a little bit of closing upside here. And then we also got uh, 5,300 of the Jan 35s. I think paper may be selling those. Maybe a little bit of overriding going up as well. Interesting stuff. Either way, the big dog right now, listeners, still... In bid options, 105,000 of the Jan 30s, three O's. Those are looking pretty optimistic not too long ago when bid was back at a 15. Now, they're looking pretty darn close. Now, let's keep on rolling. Let's go out to some of the other products that are lighting our tape out there today. Marathon Digital Holdings. I know for a lot of you, this is your preferred crypto vector in your securities accounts. Twenty nine forty when we kicked off the show up, about exactly $2. So they've been on the rampage as well, just from... Nearly 15, not too long ago, up to nearly 30, then back down to about 15, now back up to nearly 30. They've been moving all over the place. If you're looking for vol, <laughs> it's hard to beat Mara right now. Uh, looking for volume, also hard to beat Mara out there. The ADV has come in, 407,000 on the tape. That's down 61,000 from our last show. But then again, looking at it right now, nearly 600,000 contracts on the tape right now, 594,000. So seems like that ADV is going to be ticking back up, listeners. Folks are slinging Mara fast and furious today. The Vol, 141. So again, hard to beat Mara when you're looking for a little bit of juice for your options trades out there right now. In terms of action, what is leading the dance in Mara today? 61, almost 62,000. Man, that's a lot of pips. almost all of Bitto. And it's just in this one March 30s, went up 62,000 times. There. That is all opening. Let's just dig in really quickly to see what they were up to. It looks like they were buying them for prices around $2.30. So again, March 30s, we're hanging out. These actually, you know, these are expiring on the 1st. These expire next week. <laughs> so they're not messing around, listeners. We will know by our show next week whether these worked out or not out there wow that's um that's some near day to paper they expire this friday Sixty thousand of these bad boys going up for two dollars and 30 cents again those are the 30s we're at 29.40 right now so they need this upside to keep up looks like they've given up some of the go since we started the show we were at 29.40 when we kicked off the show it has dropped to about a 28.60 so that's not looking good for them if you know anything about buying near day to paper listeners you need that move to happen and you need it to happen Quickly and aggressively. And one thing you don't need is moving in the other direction. Well, that seems like what we're getting right now. Either way, that big print today dwarfs the size open interest position in Mara right now. 33,000 of the March 17 puts. So already 62,000 of these 30s expiring next week have gone up. So we're talking about sea change on the volume front. My goodness, Mara just on the rampage. Is that the case for the rest of the altcoin universe? I guess let's find out. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, off to the altcoin universe we go. I kind of gave away a spoiler at the start of the last segment when I said Bitcoin hanging out at the 1T level. So yeah, it's going to be there in a little bit. But before we get there, let's break down the rest of the top 10. Oh, we got some shakeups. Go figure. We take a couple of weeks off for some holidays here in the U.S. It gives just enough time for our old friend Doge to fight its way back into the top 10. Coming at number 10, listeners, 12.5 billion worth of market cap. See you later. Well, actually, Avalanche is still in there. So see you later, Tron, it looks like in there. Interesting, interesting. Doge fighting it out neck and neck with Tron and Avalanche and all the rest. Number nine, of course, Avalanche. Uh, about two billion more worth of market cap, about 14 and a half billion for Avalanche. Number eight is Cardano, 21.7 B worth of market cap. Number six, USD coin, 28 and about a quarter billion. Number six, just locked here, XRP. 
29, almost 30 billion worth of market cap. Will it ever budge again? <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel your pain, you XRP. You've been very patient. You deserve a reward. Uh, number five, Solana, 48.1 billion worth of market cap. Number four, BNB, 59 and a half billion. Number three, it's Tether, 97, almost 98 billion. Number two, it's ETH, 379 billion. Yeah, ETH. Well, we'll get to that in a second, but uh, yeah, you've hitting some milestones as well. And number one, it's the big dog. It's Bitcoin, 1.06T on the board. We are back up there, listeners. So things are looking righteous in the altcoin universe. And speaking of that, listen, let's get to it right now. ETH on our last show, 2617, but it has been feeling its oats as well. 3173 when we kicked off. The shots up 556 handles over the last two weeks, and most importantly, back up over that magical, that mythical 3,000 level. You know, we seemed like we were hanging out below 2,500 for so long, it seemed like almost insurmountable to get back up there again. And now not only have we surpassed that, they've climbed back over 3,000, nearly 3,200 right now. So hanging out at pretty much the highs for the last couple of weeks. So uh, interesting stuff out there. I know some people just, just given my... Buddy, the once in future Dr. Vix on Volvo is a hard time because he famously dumped all of his ETH back at 2,500 a couple of years ago. He was looking really good for years until this past couple of weeks. Uh, so, yeah, in, intriguing stuff out there. Are you still all in on ETH listeners? Have you moved on to other things, other assets? I'm curious. Hit us up. Let us know. Let's go down the rundown here for all things ETH. Vol wise, looking a little bit more topsy turvy, which is interesting. Again, you hit these important psychological levels, that could happen. We had a 54.3 on the seven-day, the weekly vol. Coming in to start this show this week, exactly eight points to the north, 62.3. So looking a little bit frothier. In fact, we do our show this week in Futures Options every Thursday. There are not many assets that are trading on CME right now across the broad spectrum of assets that they trade. You know, ags, metals, equities, energy, you name it. Not many of them outside of maybe nat gas I can think of off the top of my head that can rival a 62 volatility right now. So that is pretty juicy, especially when the rest of the world is getting crushed from a vol perspective, it seems like. A 30-day vol, so a more standard metric, 53.2 on the show two weeks ago, 59.2, so we're up six points there as well. So just nice pop, eight points on the weekly, six points on the one-month vol. Going out six months, almost five points, 60 even on the show two weeks ago, 64 and three quarters today. So again, vol popping. And ETH, go figure. You break through those important levels. Holdlers are going to hold. They're going to buy upside. They're not going to let it go, apparently. They're going to buy more of it. Uh, so they're going to bid up the vol. They're going to bid up the skew as well. I guess we'll find out. Near dated, the answer is no. Maybe we have exhausted them. <laughs> because last show, the weekly skew was a positive eight. We were all about the upside. And, of course, it materialized. It happened. So now we're not quite flat. We're at about one and a quarter. So we've come in almost seven points on that. Which, again... Not exactly surprising. We have this big of a move. People are going to monetize some of that upside. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, going out one month, the skew last week, positive six. This week, a positive 1.8. So that's coming about a little over four points there as well. And going out six months, positive 7.3. Two weeks ago, six and a half. So that's looking still pretty frothy, which is kind of interesting. So longer term, holders are going to hold all, it seems like. Uh, in terms of OI, that's coming in a little bit. The calls, 1.6 million down 23,000. Again, not a huge change. Some people obviously letting some calls go given this massive boom to the upside. Puts 662,000 up 62,000. So maybe some folks getting a little bit spooked out there wanting to lock in some of these gains. Hard to blame them either way. Let's get on out to the rest of the altcoin universe and we'll get out of here for this week. Listeners, Solana, 109 and three quarters. This week, 111.06, two weeks ago, so down about a buck thirty, but still hanging out in that frothy range, very close to that 110, which it's been kind of flirting with for quite some time. XRP, uh, what can I tell you at this point? Just had a little bit of a move, 53 and a half two weeks ago, 54.9 right now. It's up about 1.4 cents. That qualifies as a big move in XRP these days. It's just, it's just locked. I, again, I feel if you XRP folks, you, you deserve. Something, some sort of settlement, some sort of, some sort of development in this, so you could finally just say, okay, maybe you want to keep it, you want to dump it, whatever the case may be. You deserve some sort of closure, some sort of resolution, and that still is up in the air, unfortunately. Dogecoin, I mentioned them fighting their way back into the top ten, eight point two cents two weeks ago, eight point eight cents this week, so ticking up a little bit, and that's enough to 
fight their way back into the top 10. Litecoin, 71 and about a quarter today, 72.87 uh, two weeks ago. So down about almost a buck and two thirds from this time two weeks ago. Let's run through a few others here. Cardano, two weeks ago, 56 cents, 61.7 cents, or up nearly six cents on the last couple of weeks. Polkadot, 7.30 two weeks ago, 8.04 this week, up a whopping 74 cents. And everybody's favorite, Shiba Inu. A million zeros, nine five this week, a whopping nine seven. So Shiba Lambo's time, not quite, but you know, maybe you can put a, a lug nut on one of those tires this week. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us once again in the Crypto Rundown. Man, we did a lot of living in the span of the show this week, kicked things off talking about all things crypto derivatives and clearing over there at Bitnomial. I want to thank our guest, Michael Dunn from Bitnomial. If you're intrigued by all things physical settlement, might be worth kicking the tires over there. Listen, they're going to be adding options soon, so that should certainly be an intriguing development. We always love more options in any market, so in the crypto space, yes, please. Uh, but that will do it for us here on the show today. Back again tomorrow with another great pro Q&A session. Back again on Wednesday for all you folks who are still come into grips with these options things let me present a great program very popular program options boot camp we will get you up to speed on all things options so you won't feel maybe as out to sea maybe you're listening to the show you're hearing us throw around terms like skew and volatility and all these other things we'll get you up to speed there crypto rundown on wednesday thursday for all you folks who like a little bit of crypto maybe you want to explore some other assets as well this week in futures options every thursday we do touch on crypto there as well as just about everything else trading over there at cme every week and spoiler alert bitcoin has been moving lately so it is making our movers and shakers list over there every week volume on the options not so much but underlying and vol wise it is delivering and then of course uh, the option block every thursday as well for all of you who like a little bit of uh, unusual activity and all that fun friday of course volatility views then we're back again exclusively for our pro folks the options insider.com slash pro they get access to options oddities a very fun show where we break down a whole week's worth of unusual activity talk about our own personal trades how they're working out all sorts of fun check that out the options insider.com slash pro then we're off for the weekend until we're back again next monday another episode of the crypto rundown stay safe out there everybody the Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>